outro cast. Tony, I'm going to say good afternoon. It's good morning here, but is it good afternoon to you? Yeah, it's uh, 5.30-ish p.m. here, so. Okay, good yeah. evening. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time. Evening, yeah. uh, how's your day My going pleasure. aside from answering the same questions from journalists over and over and over again? Luckily, also answering some new and fresh questions every now and again. So it, it, it's it's always great that someone asks like this question. No one has asked this yet today. So it, it's been fun. We had a cold day, like minus 20-ish Celsius here. And, uh, and uh, clear skies, full moon right now. So it's been a great day so far. Well, and we sauna, were... sauna later today. Lucky you. Well, congratulations in advance on the sauna. And uh, congratulations on the new record, Clear Cold Beyond. Now, when did you actually finish the record? Um, we delivered our parts at the end of August as planned. And our, our original idea was to actually release the album in October already, together with the tour that we had in, with Stradivarius. But then it came as a little bit of a shock that because of the, because of the vinyls, that the uh, schedule is that... You, release the earliest release time is five months later than you deliver the parts because of like all the uh, vinyl plants are super busy so that was a right. huge shock but I, I was i was super happy and we were very happy that we were able to release one one of those uh digital singles before the tour so we had ex at least something fresh to play on that european tour so it's so good and actually it gave us a lot of more uh, relaxed schedule with promotion and, and coming up with videos and everything. So it, uh, it's actually, a, this is a, something I would actually prefer also in the future. You have some rest time after you've been working hard on the album and everything, and then you can relax a little bit and then start with fresh thoughts and eyes and, 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 and the whole thing, you know, start doing the promotion instead of being completely burned out. Right, right. <laughs> I mean, the album is out, so <laughs> I'm glad you got a Christmas, a little bit of a break before you go into the heavy duty work mode. So when you're playing yeah. upcoming concerts, how much of Clear Cold Beyond are you playing in the concert? Are you playing one or two songs? Or are you going, here's the whole album. You're going to listen to the whole album. At the time of the, the release of the album, we will have four singles out then at that point. So the, at least those four, but we have a plan for a fifth song. So it might be probably going to be five. So from Clear Cold Beyond and then a lot of old Sonata Arctica material fitting to the set list of this one. So, so some ballads, of course, everybody needs to hear Talula for the hundred thousandth time. But, <laughs> but, but still, it, 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 it's fun to play and the people seem to enjoy it. So we're trying to find the songs that are uh, loved by the people and, and they can sing along and make a great live experience for it and promote the new stuff at the same time. Well, you're at a fascinating point in your career where people aren't expecting a single. They're just expecting it to sound like your band. You have your own sound. Your songs can be as long as you want them to be. You don't have a record company going, please give us a two minute, 40 second song. They're just going, give us an album. It sounds like you. Great. When did you kind of realize that your band was its own industry, that you didn't have to give the singles? Uh, well, we still sort of are asked for singles, but luckily they are only alongside with the album that we have the album and we don't have to go in the studio and just record one single. So something out. So it's... it's a, and of course, you know, business-wise, it's a smart idea to have a song that is fit to be a single, something that can be probably can probably get some air. So, it, it, but very early on, I did, just didn't care much. I just kept doing whatever it was that I was doing, anyways. So, and uh, luckily, there were were a lot of these uh, single fit songs there on every album, and so we were able to come up with a single, and. Uh, <laughs> it's been fairly we were lucky in that sense always by single i meant the okay the chorus needs to be here it needs to sound like this you need to use an All outside right. songwriter and it doesn't seem like your band 
have had that pressure in the last 15 years to to be commercial, to be anything but the Sonata Arctica we're fans of. Yeah, well, I've done some adventuring when it comes to songwriting, written songs that are at least on the surface a little bit complex and not not the single material per se. But uh, that's the kind of music I grew up listening to when I was a kid. And, and uh, that's the sort of thing that comes naturally for me, like the pop formula where we have an intro that is probably something along the sides of this uh, chorus line later on in the song and then you have like a, a verse and a pre-chorus and, and then the chorus thing and then maybe some extra bit later on on the song and repeat and, and that's fairly easy and coming up with a four minute song which is like the perfect length for a single for radio and all that at least it used to be uh, so it, 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 it comes very quick, quickly, and it's uh, oftentimes it's more demanding to write a short song than a long song. Hmm. Um, at least that's what I've noticed. That you, the four-minute line comes up very quickly if you want to have a chorus that you repeat <laughs> once and twice, and then then have a maybe uh, like a modulation bit <laughs> at the end, the Eurovision style kind of thing. Yeah, the Eurovision, thing, exactly. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Well, were you and th this is a compliment here. I think of you as a sophisticated musician making sophisticated oh, music that's loud. But were you ever into dumb music? Well, yeah, when I was a kid uh, and I had my first car, for example, I was listening to I was kind of. <laughs> so I don't mean like, hello, I'm the Barbie girl. <laughs> that kind of <laughs> so Aqua. yeah, dumb, yeah, dumb style, Aqua, yeah, and, and well, that was just the first example that popped into my mind, but like Dr. Alban and all those, like it was mostly that, and then Queen and and Midnight Oil and such, but which are smart, super smart, both of those, but but still there was also this, I had uh, this pop music current pop music with the like really strong bass doom, doom. it had an appeal for me and and in some point i was like demoing writing my home th things also in that style but um, i'm very very fortunate that i grew out of that <laughs> eventually although it is a lot of fun like creating any kinds of music that people can enjoy dancing or whatever it's a lot of fun but i'm, I'm very happy that eventually i landed up on a band like some of the arctica and uh, doing something that like writing songs that can be just about anything like mm -hmm. uh when you have this pop formula it's just a matter of arranging the song whatever the way you want it to be like uh, like we released a couple of uh, acoustic albums so it was very easy to transform those power metal songs and, and normal sonata arctica songs into acoustic form it's just took rearranging a little bit of rewriting but it was easy to make them recognizable and fresh. Well, what was the hard rock band that was your gateway into hard rock? I'm finding when I, when I speak to American artists of a certain age, it's usually it was Kiss or Van Halen, or if they're a little younger, it was Motley Crue. But of course, those were not the biggest bands in Finland. So I'm curious which band or bands kind of got you into heavier music. Uh, well, my heavy music was Queen pretty much for a long, long time. Uh, I found Queen in, when I was roughly like maybe 10 years old or so. Uh, and uh, I was listening to them a lot and then found Midnight Oil and such. But then along came, like, like my friends were listening to different kind of music. There was Meat Love <laughs> in one family and then uh, Twisted Sister, Kiss, uh, all those bands. But uh, I never really fell in love with those bands per se but, but but I always loved few songs from each of those like Kiss has a lot of great songs and and uh, Twisted Sister and Wasp and all those that like it's easy to compile the greatest hits of those bands kind of CD or whatever playlist you wanted to have it it was it's it's great so uh but uh, I grew up from Queen and the first band that made me fall in love with power, like metal in general was uh, Stradivarius, and that was 1997. I was 22 years old already, and their visions album. And, and, and ever since that, I, I I just found new things constantly. Gone through a little bit of a black metal phase in some point, and you know, exploring, finding new things. 
and then is drastically jumping from that kind of stuff to a man and a banjo and then early 20s jazz <laughs> that kind of weird stuff i'm into all kinds of music there's great stuff on every genre of music and a lot of even more just complete crap but that's just <laughs> my, my that's my opinion and, and you just have to find whatever tickles your bones the most right so i mentioned before that there's upcoming tour dates and that you have four or five singles already out are we the fans in the united states going to get a tour anytime in the near future from your band i hope there, it's been the news are tra- like always like that it, it's it's financially super difficult to be there and tour uh for a film and especially living in the northern parts of Finn where we are like thousand dollars on minus already when we reach helsinki our capital and then right. you get the visas which are more expensive that expensive than they used to be and then of course you need to fly over your side of the puddle and <laughs> equipment and yeah and yeah yeah yeah, then there is a bus and uh and the fuel that you have to buy for it and and everything and 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 then you just have to pray that there will be enough people coming to see each show that you can you can keep the bus rolling and the wheels rolling and the show goes on and anyway even during our like heydays which we never really had but our best time oh you're still in your heyday gets it gets bigger every tour in my opinion. yeah 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 well thanks very much but like in fin- financial ways it already uh, back then even still it, it was like we had to be on the road for five six weeks until we started making any kind of thing that could be considered profit and so it, that has gotten even more difficult obviously and you cannot just sort of push that pressure on the ticket price because it's it, like everything has gotten more expensive and we would just lose and lose the fans that uh, uh, that would be coming to see the show. But if the price is $5 more than it used to be, it's it's quite a bit. And they might actually buy the ticket, but then the shirt is out of the question at that point. And it's it's all, all big bundle. But it, it's, it's getting difficult. But anyway, there are, we've been playing around with the ideas that other, unless we get to, to play there otherwise it would be great to maybe uh, search ways to crowdfund a tour to sort of scan the scene and and, and uh, what kind of uh, ticket sales we could expect maybe and you know, how many people would be willing to come and see us on a dark show so that's that's one idea we've been playing around with but we don't have anything solid yet outside of this year and we are only playing in europe this year maybe in japan later late this year but but that's not still like it's just an idea and uh, and uh, so but anyway i do hope that you americans you make a lot of rattle there and then <laughs> shake them shake, shake the trees and then get everybody uh, to check out some of Arctica's uh, clear cold beyond album and 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 if you like it just you know create the demand for us there and then it, that's, if that's if it not, a free idea for you is that you make an American concert in Finland. So meaning you make the Americans fly out to you and then you make it look like a U.S. performance in Finland just for the Americans. Ooh. Oh, we charter a plane and make them buy tickets <laughs> on the flight. <laughs> Do that before yeah, Gene Simmons that, does. That, yeah, that sounds like a huge business idea wow (laughs) thank you (laughs) you're welcome so i have two quick questions and then i let you go and the the first one is all we know about you in sonata arctica is the music we don't know much about you the human beings what is your main hobby outside of music when you're not busy with music Mm, i play computer games mostly on computer and and but sometimes i lately with Play, PlayStation 4, I actually found the console gaming. I had and have uh, like Xbox 360 and uh, PlayStation 3 as well. But no, the, the PlayStation 3, it still wasn't on par with a PC, I think. I, I was still like very much into PC. But PlayStation 4 was something that allowed me to play the kind of kinds of games that I really want to play. So that was the thing that, you know, gaming, that's basically the thing that I do 
and it's like generational thing as well. You know, we have a group where I have there's my dad, and then myself and my son. We are playing the same game, and at, at the moment it's called Valheim. It's like this Viking adventure fighting kind of thing, and it, it's a lot of fun, and then it's like allowing us to talk and imagining. You know, there's like more than 60 years age difference between the oldest and the youngest <laughs> player. <laughs> so it, it's, it's nuts, but it, gaming has been something that I, I've done all my life and I, I don't see any reason giving it up ever for any, any reason. I will always find my few minutes of playtime. That's, that's fantastic. It's a, yeah, yeah, it's, it's escapism and, uh, at its best. Because when you think about it, what brings people more together than music, video games, uh, The Simpsons, pizza. There's just like five or six things that everybody likes, and video yeah, games yeah, exactly. are, are there. And yeah. then, especially uh, nowadays, nowadays, especially when when it's it has become a social thing, even more because uh, you can play online, and, and yeah. you can be all over the world and, and still play and talk with the, with those guys that you're playing with, and it's just just not one guy sitting behind a com Commodore. 64 and Commodore 64. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember that's where I started. Yeah, I, I started from there. I still have my Commodore 64, actually. That's yeah. probably uh, worth a lot of money. Uh, one uh, day, if well, you want to get I new gear, you sell your Commodore yeah. 64, and uh, <laughs> that's a base rate. They were, yeah, it was like a nation's favorite computer at the time. So, at least in Finland, it, it's like everyone has those, I think, still. <laughs> but yeah, I will hold on to it and, and keep it with me. And my sons can later decide what they want to do with it. Wow. Yeah. Well, it will question. be worth something eventually. Yeah. Cool. Uh, last question before I let you go. You know, when your day job is to rock people live, obviously it's different than somebody like me who's the fan. But what's the last concert that you went to as a fan that you went... I'm not working. I want to see this because this will be entertaining. Oh, gosh. Uh, which band was that? that? That's been a while ago, actually. Probably some festival where I went to see some band. But, but like, really, I just went in to see the band, one band. Uh, well, at least I know. I remember vividly seeing Queen in Helsinki, in this park, and... Uh, it was wow, tears falling and and, 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 and and you know singing along all the songs and it was just amazing experience to have that. So I don't know. That was super long time ago. So there has to be some other bands, but I just can't recall which one. We don't necessarily we don't really get that many bands playing in our hometown. Came in here, it's a small place, and people bands seem to play more south there and and so yeah. Got it. Well, I'm going to say again, congratulations on your new record. Hope to Thank see it live much. in the U.S. in the near future. If not, I think the U.S. show in Finland will be fantastic, and I look forward to to going to that one. <laughs> but uh, thank you for your time, and really looking forward to your future plans as well. Thanks for listening, Larry. All right. Outro.